This is going to be the last video of the basic conduction directives. Um, and in it, we're going to talk about some really fun things that we can do just to stir the pot up a little bit uh, during our ensemble play. The two we're going to go over are panorama and memory. So let's start with panorama. Uh, the symbol for panorama is fairly simple. You just hold the baton vertically in the middle of your chest, uh, facing down, and then you're to start moving it in front of the musicians. Now what's to happen when it passes in front of a musician, they have to begin playing something. So let's say I have a few musicians in front of me, they have to be watching. When the musician is, or when the baton is in line with them, they have to begin playing, and after it passes away from them, they have to stop. So you can imagine this like sweeping sound that will move across if you were to do a big sweep as people begin playing and stop, begin playing, begin playing and stop. Uh, and it just has a kind of cool effect where you get a, basically a panorama of sound going across. Now this can get pretty fun if you start playing with certain musicians going back and forth. They really have to be focusing. And I find kids really enjoy this as well because um, they just start playing and then they stop and they start playing and stop every time the baton passes in front of them. So it really engages their focus. Um, if you have multiple rows of musicians, I like to kind of uh, turn my baton up a little bit or hold my arm higher to indicate which row I'm talking about. So first row in front of you can be way down here. Uh, second row, maybe arm up a little bit. And third row, you can maybe even tilt the baton a little bit to point to them. And fourth row, maybe like way up here if you have that many musicians. Uh, and you can kind of weave in and out of them as well. Um, so it can be pretty fun and get pretty crazy. Now the other thing to note with Panorama is if musicians are already playing something, so let's say we've given them a sustained note and everybody's playing, when the Panorama passes in front of them, they have to stop playing. So instead of sound moving across, we get these pockets of silence that start to move within the ensemble as you're moving your baton. Um, so you can have combinations of people playing and not playing, and then they have to remember what they're doing, and as the baton gets to them, they have to switch and then turn back on, or uh, play and then turn back off. So, like I said, it gets pretty crazy, and it's, it's just super fun to do as well, just to get the focus of everyone. I like to do this in the beginning of the rehearsal, uh, as it gets everyone on board and like watching me and listening to what's going on them, around them. Next, we're going to talk about the memory. Now, the memory is one of my favorite directives. Um, it requires musicians to remember what they're doing at a certain point in time. So let's say in your performance or practice you've gotten to a point where it sounds very cool. You just think there's a really cool soundscape happening or people are doing some really cool things and you would like to kind of like keep it for a later time. So all you have to do is point your head, either with your finger or the baton, and indicate that this is memory number one now. And you have to make sure everybody sees it so that they memorize what they're doing at that exact moment. So you signal to all musicians, memory number one, and you can continue on your business. Uh, mutating things and maybe changing long notes, cutting people off, you know, just keep going. And at any point later now in the piece, you can go back to memory number one, follow it with a downbeat, and they have to jump back to what they're doing at that moment when you signaled that was the memory. So the memories can go up number one, number two, number three, number four, like you can have multiple memories, um, and they all have to remember what they're doing at that moment. So it can be taxing for musicians, but it, again, it gets them to focus on what they're doing and really be engaged with the ensemble. So a fun thing I like to do with that is to have multiple memories going if your piece was long enough and you could have multiple. So let's say you have two sections. You can split one section to do memory number one, give them a downbeat so they start it. The other section, you can say to start playing memory number two that you've indicated at an earlier time, they begin that. At this point, you can kind of begin fading between the two by uh, using your dynamics, your real-time dynamics, and maybe raising number two and lowering number one, and then switching, and just getting to go back and forth, get them in the middle, and maybe back again, and it can kind of get some cool effects, like like you have two records playing at the same time almost, because there'll be different soundscapes, hopefully. So that's just one idea that you can kind of use with that, um, as well as combining all the other sim uh, signals and gestures along the memories. So you can start to alter old memories um, with new things you've done, and it just gets crazy. The, po like, the possibilities are pretty limitless uh, for what you do with it. So that's going to be the last video for the beginner directive series. Hopefully in the near future I'm going to do some intermediate videos if these are like well received. Um, and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to go over again or further explain. Uh, just leave a comment, I'll get to it. Um, and yeah, I hope you get a chance to try these out with an ensemble you're playing in or leading. Uh, even if you're not sure it would fit your ensemble, because maybe you're, you think you're a classical ensemble, or you do a certain type of music, or you play in a rock band, like, you can still apply these 
and it it just brings up musicianship um, at its core because they're all fundamental music um, like ideas that you're presenting with these gestures. So that being said, I hope you get a chance to try it, and I'll see you next time in the next series of videos.